by all means, just use the chat facility. Let's know um, what the significant features of your upbringing has been. So, um, by the way, has anyone ever had to pay their school fees whilst they were going to school or support themselves or work prior to getting into college or university or any such thing? If you have, just just uh, just say, <laughs> I, I have, or that was my experience. I want to see the kind of audience that we we're speaking to. Uh, and and by all means, yes, uh, understand, you know, how you've come to where you are right now. Now, this is important because um, like most of us, if not all of us, well, yeah, I can see that I've been there before. Yes, indeed. And if you've been there before, it's easy to uh embrace this subject because then you can it is it's more relatable now if so if anyone else has been there before just say me too <laughs> just say me too um and and that will be understood but the point here is that we're talking about intentional growth the word intentional connotes something that is not haphazard that is not left to circumstance something that is deliberate, something that is predetermined, i.e. Uh, this is not just something that would, that is not whatever we be, we be. It's not ki sera sera. That's not that kind of growth we're talking about. Purposeful, intentional growth, particularly from a humble beginning. Now, yes, there's an update there, if you can see what's on screen, that anything that, that starts at the top only has one place to go, which is downwards. However, if you start from the very, uh, from low beginnings, there's every chance that you can always go upwards. It's not guaranteed, I have to say, but, but at least there is a possibility that you can go upwards. But if you've started at the peak, well, where else do you want to go? Then you're probably just going all the way down. All right. Most of us, particularly if you're like me, that grew up in the countryside, in places like Nigeria, maybe you grew up in some other countries, particularly around West Africa, you'll be familiar with the bamboo tree. As a matter of fact, I remember when I would go to my grandfather's uh, farm, just as soon as you come out from the, from, from the vehicle, the first thing you see to your left is a bamboo tree. So we are not unfamiliar with bamboo tree. And bamboo tree lends itself to a lot of uses. Um, I remember, <laughs> again, this may give you a hint as to what my background uh, is like. I remember when I was still... Uh, walking in a poultry house, uh, we some part of the feeding trough for the birds used to be carved out of bamboo tree. So, uh, and, and of course, it's it's a very interestingly, it's it's a very good resource for that sort of work. It's certainly better than using metals, but it just tells tells you what you could do with bamboo tree. It's a very useful. Uh, very useful plant that, um, I mean, most of us have found a lot of use cases for. And I also learned that in some culture, people eat bamboo tree. But the point about bamboo is that its growth pattern is very different to most other plants. I struggle to call bamboo a tree in the real sense of the most of the trees that we see around. It's a tree, yes, but yes, indeed. But it, it looks like a shrub in a sense. But the significant thing about it is the way it grows is, is really interesting. But the thing about bamboo tree is 
that, or shall I say the lesson we want to really pick up from the bamboo tree is that its growth over a period of five years is remarkable. Please check your volume. Okay, my volume, right? Yeah. Okay, my volume is, I think it's, okay, let me try again. Uh, it's okay. Is it, is it better now? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So what we're saying is that the bamboo tree's growth is significant and, and is gaining attention, uh, in, certainly in the scientific quarters, because of the rapid, the, the speed at which it grows. Now, initially, when you plant the bamboo, it would appear as if nothing is happening. And it, it keeps getting watered most of the time through natural causes. Uh, I've seen a lot of bamboo tree planted by the uh, by streams. And initially it would appear as if nothing is happening, but suddenly within a short space of time, it starts to grow. As a matter of fact, I don't remember the actual, uh, the actual number, but it grows by several inches in a day alone. So that, by the time it, the bamboo tree is about five years, it's already grown to, I mean, well over 90 feet. Now, but the point here is that the growth of the bamboo tree teaches us a lot of lessons, which is that change would happen whether you like it or not. However, how you change in the process of change is what you can choose to determine. If I say that in other words, change is inevitable. However, growth is intentional. Now, whether you like it or not, I mean, particularly for men amongst us, you will soon see that your beards are turning white. <laughs> you will soon see that your mustaches are turning white. and. And, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can dye it, but you and I know that, that, that those bears are, are turning white. <laughs> the dye does not change the, the fact that it's already turning white. And for some men too, you might have been, as a teenager, you might have been keeping an Afro or some hairstyle that you, you kind of pose around with. But uh, due to circumstances that are usually beyond, beyond your control, you still start to say that your airline start to move backwards. <laughs> now, some people call it male pattern baldness, but the point is this, you see, change will happen. There is nothing you can do about it. As In fact, if you as a teenager were a, kind of a sports person and you could play football, you can do high jump, sprint, 100 meter sprint. By the time you're turning 35, 40, your body starts to say, you know what, <laughs> take it easy. <laughs> because you cannot do anything about the fact that change will happen. However, when it comes to growing, growing in a particular aspect or around the aspect of our life, that has to be an intentional effort. That is one point I want to uh, make clear. If you're just joining us, uh, you may want to mute your volume or your microphone. Now, there's a question that we want to pose to all of us, and this is all of us without exception, which is that five years ago, where were you? If we draw timelines in our lives, and just compare where we are right now to five years ago. Where were we five years ago? And where are we today? Five years ago, I can say without any doubt that you had dreams, you had hopes, you had aspirations. I want to do this. I will have completed this. But my question is, how many of those have been accomplished. How many of those 
were not accomplished. And what is the reason? There's an adage in the Yoruba land. They say that if a child falls down, he looks ahead. But if an, if an elderly person falls down, he looks backwards. That is reflective thinking or uh, I think it is reflecting on your experience because that's how we distill wisdom. So if the past five years has not turned out as we hoped for, is there any confidence that we can say, by which you can say the next five years will go in the direction that we desire? One thing I can say is if left to chance, Sorry to say this, maybe wasted unless something happens. And that's why we're, we're taking this course this morning or this afternoon. Unless there is intentional approach to growing, then a dream is only a dream. In fact, it may turn out to be a nightmare. The only, the only thing that God has given us the only thing that God has given us to help us in our growth adventure is to be intentional about it. Do you know something that we, that God has given us that we share with him? That word is having his image. Uh, for people who are ecclesiastical in their approach, let me quickly share this. The first name that we, that was introduced to us is the name Elohim. And the name Elohim is a, is a very interesting name, which, which is, a plural, is plural in nature, but the essence of it is someone who is capable of creating many things someone who's capable of taking many forms. That is someone who is capable of creative abilities. Someone who also is capable of initiating creative abilities or activities. Someone who is deliberate in action. Someone who predetermines. Someone who does not act haphazardly. Now, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, let us make mankind in our image and our likeness. Let them be like us in that mode that is non-haphazard, that is not anyhow, that is very, very intentional. This is something that we have inherited by virtue of our creation. And we must not lose sight of it. To act otherwise only leads to frustration without any question. So this is something I would like us to pay very close attention to because it goes right to the heart of who we are, our being. All right? Now, Please pay attention to this. Now, so the question then is five years from today, or, or, the, or I can almost make a statement, you will be the same person you are today, except for the changes that happen in the mind. And that's, that's the knowledge that changes what we currently know and how we currently perceive the world and our sense of awareness. And the best <laughs> input, some of the best input that can help in that change are books and interaction with people. Particularly people who are pulling us on the path of positive change. Books also, 
that are pulling us in the path of positive change. I mean, it's not just books because yes, you can read books, but if those books are junks, imagine someone who takes Mills and Bones and say, I'm going to finish every episode of Mills and Bones. <laughs> you know, Mills and Bones, those romantic novels that we, we, we learned about in secondary school. Imagine someone say, That's, I'm going to read every episode or every episode of James Adley Chase. Well, you can, the person will probably become very fictional or very romantic and will be doing foolishness all over the place. So it's reading the right books that expand our minds along the direction of our desired change is what we are referring to here. And then meeting people who are either going towards or have gone further ahead of in the direction that we're intending to travel. That's what Charlie Jones uh, referred to in that place. Now, let's talk about this very quickly. The kind of growth that tend to happen, and this is where I love the scriptures. You remember, you remember um, the parable of, well, not, not quite a parable, but a story that Jesus told about someone who planted his house on the rock and the one who planted on sand. That's a, that's a parallel analogy to this Mush, the mushroom experience. By the way, do you know mushroom is, is a fungi, right? It's, it's a fungi. Um, but the way it grows, it hardly ever grows any depth of roots in the soil. In fact, most of the time it grows on the back of trees, on decaying matters. So by, by inference, it's never ever going to have any deep roots. So it can go very quickly because it's feeding on uh, pre-prepared -pre food, you know, decay. If, I mean, someone, someone pours decayed food somewhere. That's already prepared food. So it just grows very quickly on it. And uh, maybe on the back of a rotting tree, it grows very quickly. And, but then it, it hardly ever has any, any deep attachment on the, uh, on, what, on, on the place where it grows. But compare and contrast that to trees, the bamboo tree, of course. But even if I refer to our environment, I mean, most of us uh, are living in the west coast of Africa, or in, in the west, uh, in the western country in Africa, particularly in Nigeria. Think about an Iroko tree. Think about some of these huge trees. One time, I was going with my grandmother to. Uh, to to our farm, and I saw this huge tree. The base of that tree is at least three four meters. Huge tree. Now that tree, I'm sure, if it was dated, would be at least a hundred years old, maybe more. But the, the, the root of that tree that went into the soil, I mean, I would imagine would be even taller than the tree itself. The tree was several meters tall. Now, you know that even if it rains, even if there was a strong wind, that tree will continue to stand because the base of it is impressive, it's strong. The tap root that, that's gone and the auxiliary root that's gone into the soil are massive. And th this for me is the comparison between mushroom growth and a growth that makes mushroom. So I, I, like, I like that phrase there, mushroom growth or the, the, the word play, mushroom growth and much room growth. And the, and the bottom line is this, having a five-year intentional growth plan is far, far, far more beneficial than looking for shortcuts. Let, let me suggest something. Do you know that, I mean, I, I, you probably agree with me, when someone is desperate, i.e. there are a lot of pressures around, 
the tendency, the temptation is to look for a quick change, is to look for shortcuts because of pressure. And sometimes uh, that is understandable, but it doesn't mean that it's right. Something may be understandable, something may be explainable, but uh, it may not be right nonetheless. And so we're not talking about this kind of shortcuts, uh, a quick way to get there approach. We're saying to look a little beyond on the horizon and begin to calibrate our lives. Now, I mean, we, we all of us trust that we'll be kept safe and sound over the next five years, 10 years. And of course, there are no guarantees. However, I would say that someone who plans will always be better than someone who does not. Someone who plans, someone who prepares, will always be better than someone who does not. A man who plans will almost always win over someone who does not. This is one of the reasons why if you look at some of the countries around the world, countries that have a lot of pressure around them, that have a lot of environmental challenges, they seem to develop faster and better than countries where things are a lot easier. The weather is good. Um, the, the, the soil is good for agriculture. You can just put your, your corn anywhere your maize seed anywhere and it, and it grows. Compare that to someone whose soil is not good at all. They have to make more effort to get something out of the soil. And those, in those people, those nations, that's why they grow far better because they, they, they've started off with a lot of challenges. Has you can you can just uproot mushroom with your with your bare hands. A little child can do that, and as a consequence, they really have no future. Uh, my friend, um, Reverend Ashina, we remember this. When we were in the secondary school, we did uh, something in, in integrated science. We call a class of plants epiphytes. Epiphytes are plants that grow on some other plants. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm sorry if I can use a Yoruba word. Uh, Afumo. <laughs> they are called epiphytes. And the problem is they do not grow on the soil by themselves. They always have to find something else to grow on. And as a result, as a result, their lives depend on whatever they're growing on. If that thing dies, they die. They really have no roots in themselves. So uh, that's not who we are. That's not who we want to be. The bamboo, as, you, as we see it, gains ground because of deeper root in comparison. But look at some of the trees that surround us that we see from time to time, Iroko, uh, Mahogany. All of these trees, they have very deep roots. They de develop a network of deep roots and that forms their identity, their character. When you see those trees, you think this tree has character. Uh, how do you feel when you see, when you see a chair that's been made from mahogany tree or cedar tree or iroko tree? You know that the price that that goes for in the market will always be better than something made from just, uh, just some palm frond. It's because there's a character to those trees. The character is called strength. It's called resilience. It's called perseverance. It's called endurance because it takes time for them to grow. And, and I would like to say it here that leadership, just as in growth, 
does not happen in a day. It happens daily. And it is when this has happened over time, that's when they become enviable. That's when they draw the attention. That's where you, you're impressed by them. That's where you, you want to go around them because of the patience that they've gone over time, because of the identity that's been built over time, because of the character, the, 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 the test of strength. You trust those threes because, because they have character. Right. So my point here is this, what we are going to say is that we cannot subscribe to a growth pattern that is accidental. What's the difference between accidental growth and intentional growth? Well, people who grow accidentally tend to be procrastinative in nature, by nature. They procrastinate, they always say, Tomorrow is another day. <laughs> I will do it tomorrow. They, they tend to feel satisfied very quickly. And I must say, see, I speak as one amongst us, someone of African heritage as well. This is one of the bane of the African culture. We get satisfied too quickly. We tend to look for Comfort. As soon as we lay our hands on comfort, we just begin to relax and say, you know what? Look, I can't kill myself. <laughs> I mean, I've tried. And that's why, that's why you hardly can point to a company that is 50 years old in, in Nigeria, for example. If a country, if, if a company is 50 years old in Nigeria, it's likely to be foreign or must have been started by some foreign people and maybe then inherited by Nigerians. But I can guarantee that you hardly can find a country that is one year old in Nigeria. And the reason is that we tend to be short term in our approach. We want to eat this morning. You know, the Bible talks about, about the unfortunate state of a nation or a town whose king is a child. So woe to you, O land, if your king is a child and your princes eat in the morning. Meaning they, 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 they quickly look for reward. They, they quickly want something right now. You know, give us food, let us eat, and then everything else will take care of itself. It is a sure path to slavery. No doubt about it. So accidental growth tends to have this kind of character, which is that someone always procrastinates, planning to start tomorrow. Whereas intentional growth is about, you know what, today cannot be let, cannot be wasted. We must begin now. We must begin today. Someone who's going to grow intentionally will not, in fact, we hate procrastinating. People that lend themselves to accidental growth, they wait for growth to come. They always expect someone else to do it. And they are quick to point the finger to someone that did not make it happen for them. So they will say, oh, if not that my father did not do this, if not that my uncle did something like this, it was never they never ever point a finger to themselves. And you see, when we point, look at my finger. When you point a finger, you may be pointing at some, I mean, one of those fingers may be going to towards someone. The other ones tend to point back towards you, which is that, look, no one is responsible for your growth. You are. So intentional growth requires that we take complete responsibility for our growth. Let me tell you a quick story. I was about 17 years old when I was speaking to a senior friend. Well, as it happens, most of my friends tend to be older than me. So this, um, this brother must have been 
maybe about 10 years older than me. So I went to him, I said, I said, ah, brother, I'm feeling very bored. And he made a statement that has stayed by me since that time. He said, the reason why you're feeling bored is because you have no plan for your life. <laughs> he said it so bluntly. <laughs> Do you know something? I left that place and I determined that I would never make that statement again. And honestly, I have never said I'm bored since 17 years old, since I was 17. I've never been bored. There's always something to do. And this is why I like to challenge. I like to speak to young minds a lot because certain mistakes can be corrected. If they can be corrected early enough, uh, you will reap the reward further down the line. But if things go pear shape as a teenager, I think it takes time to correct it, to get back on track. So we must take responsibility for our growth. And what did I start to do? I now went on a reading, <laughs> like it was as if I was possessed. I, I got every kind of book by Kenneth Hagin, Robert Leardin, this person. I was consuming books. Then I started to read my Bible like it was food. I would read 20 chapters in a day. I will read 10 chapters in a day. So don't blame me if it comes out of my mouth readily. It's, it's, it's a result of an investment. And I challenged my, my, my child. I said, listen, you, you cannot afford to be foolish. I, I said that this is how I train my own child. I mean, I challenged her <laughs> very strongly. You know, and I said, we are not training, we are, not, we are training leaders in this house. We are not raising peasants. Meaning you're going to expect to hear a lot of no from me. You're not going to get anything just because you ask for it or because you think you're my, you're my child. No, you're going to get a lot of no's so that you can learn to, to understand that things don't just drop on people's laps. Anyway, let's leave that alone. Accidental growth versus intentional growth. We're still saying that people who grow accidentally, they learn only from mistakes. You can either learn from pain or you learn by wisdom. Most people who grow accidentally tend to learn from their mistakes. The way to make a mistake and the pain of that mistake then tells them, don't do it again. Whereas people who grow intentionally, because they seek knowledge, they're, they're already looking at people who are doing well, they're looking at books, they are, res they are researching. So they're they are already thinking about what to do. Now, now this is, look at, look at the difference between wisdom and, ex and experience, in my view. <laughs> and you see why we cannot afford to depend too much on our own experience to, make to do things. If we pick marriage, for example, if you want to learn by experience in marriage, what you're saying is you want to first have bad experience in marriage before you now start to get it better. Now, question is, how many marriages do you, you plan to have? <laughs> if you plan to have just one, then you would rather, you better plan very well to learn a lot about it before you get into it. Instead of making it up as we go along, Interestingly, this is why I say that we're being the way we have, we've been trained is unhelpful. Most people just get given a car to drive, right? And no, no, that's not what I mean. When when before in some countries, before you are allowed to drive a car, you have to go through a driving school and you get a license before you are allowed on the road. But some of the crucial things in our lives are just left to chance. So a boy meets a girl and they think they are okay. <laughs> and they say, let's go and marry. And I'm thinking you're taking a risk, <laughs> big risk. In fact, some people will say, I'm looking for a miracle marriage. No, I say, you do not want a miracle marriage. <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you want to plan and be sure that you are getting to it with your eyes open. To marry China. Now, accidental growth lends itself to good luck, you know, uh, to luck, a wish. 
as if, oh, the people who grow and come out well are only just lucky. Well, which is what I'm saying. Because you're right. Just to be this related, let me tell you my quick story. As a 17 year old, I had to work in a poultry house and my salary, my first salary was 800 naira. In today's money, that's less than one pound. I mean, you, you know what the exchange rate is. And when I say I work in a poultry, I don't mean like a backyard poultry. I'm talking about a fully industrialized poultry with over 3,500 birds. And I would work 11 hours in a day, minimum. I was only 17. I would get under the pen to, to pack the dung of the poultry, of the birds, and they would literally pull on my head. And I did that, not just in one poultry, but in two poultry houses. Coming through that experience, I became a man. I stopped looking for an uncle to help me or someone to give me something. I started playing the man. I was earning my money. I was saving out of that into the Naira. I was even giving uh, people money from that 800 Naira salary. I remember the first time I gave my grandmother 500 naira. I said, Mama, please uh, invest in your business. Add this to your, invest, to your business investment. My, mother could, my grandmother could not take it. Her eyes were filled with tears. Because she was still looking at me as the boy she, he, he changed nappy for. <laughs> but the point is, it is those kind of things that shape, that, that shape people. Certainly, it shaped me. And... I then believe that, listen, uh, you have to work hard to, to get things. I, I mean, if I was going to, to have a shoe, I, I, would, I would buy it for myself. And as a matter of fact, I think from that time onwards, um, I don't think my dad ever bought a shoe for me since, since probably 15 or 16. Meaning every shoe I had from that time I was, I bought it myself. My point is this. When you see people who seem to be going ahead, look at their story. Don't, don't be enamored by their present. Ask them, how did you get here? When you, know, when you learn how they've gotten to where they are, then you can determine whether you should, whether you still want what they have or not. <laughs> Because if, this, if you learn how they've gone through the prison, how they've gone through, um, I'm talking about the experience of, of Joseph now, before you envy Joseph, just, just consider his experience and, and ask yourself whether you want that experience. Anyway, let's move. Let's move on. That they quit early and they quit often. However, there is this kind of perseverance that people who embrace intentional growth open themselves to. Long and hard. Look, I know my, my friend, I call him Solomon, uh, Reverend Shine. Uh, we've been through a lot together. I remember when we eat from pot together. <laughs> I will make a meal from. Let me, let me not tell our story. Don't worry. <laughs> I don't have time to come for that. But we were shaped by adversity. That's my point. And that's what builds character. So don't envy him if you've not known the path he's gone through. You must be, if, if, unless you're willing to embrace that. And, and with due respect, I know most of us also have passed through difficult difficulties. But uh, and, and if, if you are, I would say, hang in there. Don't, don't, don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Because you are building character. You are building something that no one will ever give you. 
So I, I want you to be encouraged. I, I don't, I'm, I'm encouraging you not to give up. I'm not, I don't want to disrespect you to think that, oh, you know what, you've not gone through things. You have, I know you have, or I suspect you have. But those things are building in you the necessary character, the, the capacity to fight for things. See my screen. People, as they tell go, you see, the funny thing about that is they talk big. They they want to play it safe. They don't want to stick their necks out. But you see, intentional growth requires that you fight for good habits, you follow through, you become thorough, you take calculated risks. No, you see, take risk, taking risk is important, but I need to qualify that to take calculated risks, risks. Don't expect it to be easy. There's this one that, that really resonates well with me. People who grow accidentally usually think like victims. And because of my passion about the people of my ethnic background, I, I want to say that we are not victims unless we choose to see ourselves as such, and we must not see ourselves as such. Rather, we should embrace a learning attitude towards everything, a learning approach. People who grow accidentally tend to rely on talent alone, but talent is never enough. Imagine someone who has the ability to sprint, to run 100 meters, but does not wake up in the morning to, to build the, the, the muscles, to train. Well, someone who may not have as much talent, but subscribes to the training, will eventually do better. People who grow intelligently, they rely on character. Now, this one, <laughs> I think, it happens way too often. People who grow accidentally, they tend to stop learning after graduation. They think, look, I have finished reading now. Now I ought to be reading money. <laughs> you know that expression? <laughs> it's only money I ought to be, I ought to be counting now. Oh dear. What, what a poor mindset. The moment you stop growing, you start to die. <laughs> And the moment you start, you stop learning, you stop to grow. So please, it's an appeal, but also an encouragement that, that we must embrace intentional growth. Now, what are the things that must be paramount on our minds as we subscribe to intentional growth and development, personal development? Number one, Avoid distraction. Let me ask you, yesterday, just yesterday, how many hours did you spend on your phone? <laughs> what was your screen time like, like, like yesterday? Or I don't want to say this week because that may be a little embarrassing. <laughs> but if you are bold enough, put it, put it on the chat. How many hours did you spend on the screen yesterday? Particularly on your phone, on Facebook, on Instagram, or Snapchat and all those things. Those things are designed to eat your time away. And the people who design these things, they, they know exactly what they're doing. They're doing. They design them to be very, very addictive. That's have you not figured out when you go on Facebook, you plan to just check for 10 minutes, but after two hours, you're still there. Designed to work, to make to, and then you go on YouTube. You someone you want to watch Nollywood or something, and then you watch five episodes. You watch part one, part one to five, <laughs> and each part is two hours. <laughs> Ten hours has gone. Ten hours of your life has gone. Oh dear! Now this is the problem. These things are designed to be very very addictive and to steal your time. But the, the irony of this of it is this: your time is your life. Your time helps away like that, you never get it back. Forget about it, you never get it back. 
Purpose is that purpose is given to be accomplished over a space of time. So let's say the purpose of God for your life has been planned to be delivered in 50 years. And 20 years have been wasted. Now you have 30 years to do a 50-year job. Tell me, tell me if you are not already up against it. This is, this is why most people never fulfill their potential because of wasted time. All right. So to avoid destruction, then, oh, this, this second statement, I, I almost want to echo it a hundred times. There is no tree that has its root detached from itself. Meaning that the best place and the only place to start is right where you are. <clears throat> it's very tempting to think that if I get to that place that I'm looking forward to, then I will start to change. Then things will start to happen for me. Oh, that is a fallacy. Nothing can be more um, Growth begins where you are, right where you are. Like I'm still, I will back, I refer back to my story. When I was in the poetry house, do you know sometimes during my break, I'll pick a book by Robert Leardin, or um, I, ask, I, have, I had a few other authors. I've just started to read right there. Then a time came and I've discovered that most of the people that we were in court, unfortunately, to get out to be at the poetry, <laughs> we all have failed our, we, are, we all have not, have not passed our SSE as we should. And I saw a gap that most of them failed maths. And I, I've always been very good in maths. Do you know what I did? I started to teach them maths in the poetry house. By God's grace, I know one person in particular, number two, that then went on to go to the polytechnic and was able to move away from there. But that was me, instead of feeling sorry for myself, but to turn my adversity into an opportunity. I was thinking like, I, th I thought I was a David, I thought I was a Joseph. You know the way just Joseph was feeling in the prison? He thought, he thought he, let, me, let me solve every post problem. So that's where my name David Joe came from. <laughs> David, even though he was in the back, he was left alone to be looking after the sheep. He, took, he, he saw that as an opportunity. That was where he wrote most of his poems. Most of the songs that we read were written in, in a state of loneliness when he was alone. So that's, and that's what I was, I was saying myself. So I was reading a lot of books and I was also training people. And then at one time, I took the poetry, I said, I, I said I'm going to own this poetry. Meaning when the owner comes here, he will always be impressed. So I literally managed that poetry. And in time, I became an advisor to the owner of the poetry. So we say, go and call me Kunle to, go and, to give me advice. <laughs> I was only 17. This man was the age of my dad. And he did a Greek science to a master's level. I did not even do a Greek at, at this, uh, I mean, WIAC level. But we say, go and call me Kunle to give me advice. Why was he saying that? Because I decided to take full responsibility for that poetry. If I see any grass, I cut it myself without being told. I mean, only God knows how many scorpions lost their lives at my hands. <laughs> and because I was, I, was in, I was bent on making that poetry a success as a 17 year old. So growth begins where you are, not I wasn't thinking, and it, interestingly, most of my colleagues then, my schoolmates, I already got into the university. I wasn't thinking, oh, oh, if we ah, look at my life, eh, I'm here in the poetry. My, my classmates are already in university. Ah, look at me now. Eh? No, no. 
Growth begins where you are, not where you are not. The Bible says that a fool's eyes are in the ends of the earth. So, but a wise man looks well into his going. Pay attention to life goals and assignment that gives you the most desirable peace and fulfillment. You know, I, I, I would say, can I say something to everybody here? Before today goes, sit down and write down your goals. Write them down. Or if you have written them down, revise them in order to refine them. I want to, I want to give you that challenge. I wish my daughter knows that about herself. And, and, and that's good because, well, uh, she has no choice really, to be honest. And then look at the assignment, the things you are involved with. Let me put it this way. If you want to get better at anything, or if you have an aspiration to be something, right? Look at the opportunities that surround you right now. And those opportunities will look like work. But subscribe to investing yourself in them as your opportunity to become what you are hoping for. Faith is what? Is the substance, meaning there's something right now that you have, that you can do, that your hands finds to do, which connects to what you hope for. So that's what it means. Is the substance of something you hope for. Is the present evidence, the one your hand can touch, of what you are not yet seeing. Meaning the future that you are looking for, you can't see it yet. But the evidence of that future is in your daily routine. It's in what you have in front of you right now. So if that is your study, then invest into it. If that is a business you are supporting somebody with, invest into it. And I'll say this to, to, to progress. Learn to use your imagination. Leave, I mean, go into your future, but keep your feet in the present. Meaning, don't think that everything is ends and, and, and um, is limited by what you see today. This is why God has given us a mind. With your mind, you can travel. You can, you can picture your future and, and document it and write it down. Oh, if God never gave us the ability to see tomorrow, we will be depressed today. Or we will be overexcited today. But with the mind, you can go into your future and say, no, no. I will endure today, or I better be careful with today because there's also the next day to come. Be futuristic in your thinking because growth should end up in your ability to grow others, to pass it on. And, and that's what I see as my job. My job is, is a change agent, someone who helps other people to grow. And I find it very rewarding to, to be part of anyone's growth at all. In fact, I take it as a privilege. Now, what is the danger of this shortcut approach <laughs> to growth? Uh, I beg you, my, my, my friends, uh, I want you to have a, a deep hatred for shortcuts. I want to appeal to you. Because anything that is, that is done as a shortcut, never really, really has a structure. And in fact, oftentimes they end up being the longer road. How many times have you tried to go by shortcut and you find that that place has not been closed? <laughs> you now have to turn back <laughs> and not go back to the road that you, that you have taken in the first instance. Losing it all. Let me ask a question. How many of us As, I mean, how many people drive here? And have you ever taken a shortcut that you're not finding that that road has been blocked? <laughs> just, just say, <laughs> I have. I've been blocked several times. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can, you know how frustrating that can be. Exactly. 
and you now have to go back and queue <laughs> again. <laughs> Adversities around you will multiply if you're looking for a shortcut to, to growth, to development. Shortcut means a grow without foundation and without structure. It means looking to evade the process. You want to circumvent the process. You, 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 want, to, you want to get it very quickly. And we see this all the time. Most of the trees that get pulled down during a storm are those that don't have deep roots. A miracle tree fall down. I don't think so. Because the root is deep in the ground. The branch can tear, yes, but the root <laughs> is in the ground. And sometimes, and this, is, this, is, this can be tragic, people, how many people have lost their lives because they have tried to get there way too quickly. Quickly, in, in a modern day, I mean, in experience that we find now, I'm sure you've you've watched a lot of videos of people who've, who've literally lost their lives because of this quick approach to getting things. Some people have turned mad, literally speaking. Some people have even had their life cut short. And some people have made a mess. They've, they've really, really made a mess of their lives. How many women do you know about that say, I wish I did not marry this man? Or how many men do you know that say, I wish I did not marry this woman? How many people who say, ah, I wish I did not go into this business? Meaning, then, meaning that this kind of Build anything that is qualitative by quick fix. It's impossible. Look at what the Bible says. I'm talking about when, when God was taking the children of Israel as, and settling them into the land of Canaan. He was saying, I will not do this thing overnight. I will do it little by little because if I give you a rapid growth experience, you will have to contend with the unintended consequences. The beast can multiply, will multiply against you. And in, in effect, you will have adverse experiences. Do you also know that in Genesis chapter two, the Bible was saying that God did not allow it to grow because there was not a man to till the soil, to manage the growth. So God will withhold growth when there's no management. And management is not a shortcut approach. It is, it is being very intentional to pay attention to the process of growth and development and expansion. I know you know other scriptures that go along this line. I, I, I hope you're all Bible, stu Bible students. Right. So how do we experience steady and personal and incremental growth? Since that's what the, this particular learning experience is about. Well, the first indication there is by self-discovery. This is why the ancient Greek will say, oh man, know thyself. You know, the point there being, if you don't know yourself, everyone else will tell you who you are not. Everyone else will define you. And, and listen, people are way too quick to put a label on you. One of the things they say, you are black. <laughs> you are this. And I say, well, I did not sit down with you 
to agree that I'm black. I, so I, I do, I'm not obligated to take on your label. <laughs> Meaning, meet yourself before you start to meet people. Meet yourself, understand who you have been made to be. That's why I say you must be a student of yourself. You must practice self-documentation, self-discovery. You know, on our first training, I said that most people know a lot about accountants, the other people's <laughs> general ledger and trial balance than they know themselves. Is that not what accountants do? <laughs> all, of, all accountants, all they do is just learn about other people's accounts <laughs> without having time to even build their own accounts. Look at that. There's, there's a story in the scripture that says that, you know, I think it's in Song of Solomon. It said, do not look upon me because I'm black. My mother's children make me the keeper of the sheep, but my own vineyard I have not kept. So if you spend your time being, learning about other people's affairs without investing time in knowing about your own affairs, A, there's no way you can have this incremental growth you're talking about. And it's a tragedy. You know, most people, particularly young men in, in Africa, in Nigeria in particular, they know so much about the Premier League. They know Arsenal, they know Mind United. <laughs> they, they can't even count every, play, every player in a team. But ask them, who are you? They have no clue. They don't even know how many people are playing for a Yimba. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My point is this, you know, mind your own business. <laughs> That's where I'm going. Mind your own business. Look well into your, a wise man looks well into his goings. Self-discovery. You need to discover yourself to know who you truly are, to know what you are good at, to know what you like and what you don't like. Write them down. Practice do, do a course on yourself. You know, you sometimes, most of us have done courses, that four-year course, five-year course. No, I, I challenge you, just do a three-week course, just three weeks on yourself. <laughs> and write down everything you know about yourself. I'm not saying five-year course. I'm not saying one-year course. Just, just start with three weeks course. In fact, start with a week course on yourself. Writing down everything you know about yourself. Everything. If I say, what's your height? Most people don't know. If I say, what's your weight? Most people don't know. Do self-documentation. Another point here is, it must be our aspiration to grow into a respectable leader. And respect is a consequence of character. Means do not do not look down on yourself. Um, I will say it very briefly now, and I say this all the time. You know, I, I live in I live in in the Western culture, and I see this thing a lot about people of my heritage. We tend to practice self degradation a lot. diminish ourselves, we, um, we practice self-devaluation. And I'm constantly challenging people, no, come out of it. So do not despise your days of little beginning. There was a time where <laughs> my best jeans and the only jeans I have was four inches longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try to imagine what I said. Meaning it was a handed, handed down jeans. It was given to me by my brother. I had to fold it in. And yet, I was still walk with, you know, with confidence to go and play drums <laughs> in fellowship. I did not think I was inferior. 
because I did not have something that other people had. The days of little beginning. It was have they said that a, a lion a lion, if you take it away from Africa and take it to the United States, it's not going to become a cat. It's still a lion. <laughs> and if you bring the best bred cat from UK, from US, and take it to Nigeria, it's not going to turn to, to a lion. Meaning, a lion is lion because it is born so. It's it by nature. You are God's image. And you do not become any less in spite of your circumstances. You are not inferior to any grouping or any class of people. Please, I, I hope you take this deep down because you are not inferior. As a matter of fact, what I say is that human beings are the same everywhere. They may have certainly different, different environment, but human beings fundamentally are the same everywhere. So do not despise your days of little beginning. Then strive towards your goal despite the attack of your critics. See, the moment you decide to go forward, you cannot stop the work of backbiters. I, you know, you know why they are called backbiters. Backbiters, they stay in the back to bite you at the back, and they are biting you at the back is meant to help you run faster. <laughs> so, this you know, Solomon and I we, we learned that when when we were uh, in our <laughs> in our early days. Thank God for the people that that trained us. So my point is that, look, you can't afford to pay attention to to people who are not going on your journey with you, whose only job is to criticize you. But don't ignore what they say, though. Well, let, let, me, let me just qualify that. If someone attacks you, just ask yourself, is any of those things true? That is, is it an attack based on a character deficiency? If that is true, correct yourself. See that as an opportunity to work on yourself. That, okay, thank you for pointing that out. If somebody accuses you, you are a liar. You are never consistent. Just tell yourself, just tell okay, thank you for helping me see what I need to work on. But if it is an attack based on envy, i.e. because you are going forward and they're just trying to uh, attack you because you are going forward, you are growing, ignore that. But any Criticism that is that is down to a character deficiency must be embraced. Whether they say it nicely or say it harshly. Now, I know that it's not always easy because not, none of us likes to be criticized. However, it can be one of the best opportunities. Do you realize that <laughs> the attack that Joseph had was what promoted him. The promotion was not easy. The process was hard, but that was the opportunity, that was the pathway to growth. And if not for Judas, if, if all of Jesus' disciples were John and Peter, then it would never be crucified because those guys were never crucified and they would never betray him. It took a Judas to advance the work of redemption. I'm just kind of putting that perspective there so that we can look at what to ignore and what to embrace. And then to grow, we must embrace service, serving others and not waiting to be served. What does, that, what does this mean practically? If you're in a place and you see a problem, the moment if you see that problem, consider it something to respond to. Either you can respond to it directly or you're going to gather people to work at it together, but don't leave a problem alone that you spot. 
because not everybody sees that kind of problem as you see it. And of course, don't jump into it straight away to try to solve it. Sit down, have a plan to solve it. That plan will tell you what you need. That's why Jesus said, if any man wants to build a house, will he not first count the cost? So please count the, co count, count the cost in your service. Otherwise, you don't want to start something and then stop halfway and, and back out. But be an answer, determined to be an answer to the problem that you see. And you don't have to change the world, really. You just need to solve a problem for one person at a time. That's, that's the way I look at it. So I'm never, I, I don't put myself under undue pressure. I want to solve a problem where I am for at least one person. Soon enough, that person becomes two, becomes 10, and that's how growth happens. That's, where, that's how opportunities expand. So what are the active ingredients for our personal growth? Let, let's run quickly. You have to nurture yourself because nobody will do it for you. Your growth is your responsibility. And the, mo the moment or the sooner we embrace that opportunity, the better it will be because that will always make a difference between those who do and those who don't. And you have to constantly learn, unlearn, and relearn. See, learning is a lifelong adventure. I say I'm a permanent student because there's always something that you don't know. Always something. There's always something you can do better. And there's always something you need to stop doing. <laughs> That's why we need to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Everything can be done better. Absolutely everything. Is that not the reason why there was iPhone 1 and then there's iPhone 14? Is that not the reason why all of the vehicles that we appreciate have grown, have, dis have changed from one version to another? Maintain a flexible mindset, meaning an adaptable mindset, a mind that is open to embrace change. Rigidity sometimes can be a huge disadvantage. I mean, you, you want to be firm in our commitment, but we want to be flexible in the way our mind interacts with knowledge. Flexible, open to change if there's a better way to do things. And there's always a better way to do things. That's why you must remain flexible. You have to pursue personal growth with energy. It must become your work. I Growth is my work. I am invested into this. And of course, you have to engage strategic nourishment to experience healthy growth, meaning uh, have a plan over time. I tell yourself, look, look at yourself and ask yourself, by the end of this year, by God's grace, where, what are the things I need to grow at? Then think further, over the next 12 months, 18 months, three years, and then feed yourself in the areas that you wish to go at. You know, always knowing that, that growth is optional, is a key factor in this. Change will happen, growth is optional. Now, the question then is, how do you not just focus on having rewards, but having returns over and above just having rewards. Because you want to look at the greatest returns on your growth plan, on your growth journey. And these are some of the things that begin to accrue to you as you invest in your growth journey, wisdom. You, you, you become 
the, let me use this word, the consultant in your sphere of influence, the person that people want to reach out to for advice, for wisdom, for counsel, for knowledge. Just by embracing a, a growth approach. And I was saying to you that as a 17 year old, my boss would say, go and call me Kunle to come and to give me advice. And I was only 17. It was, it, the man was, <laughs> it's a father to me. But it was because of the books and the people and the embrace of intentional growth. As part of your returns, you can look forward to fulfillment of your dreams because those dreams are now not just left to chance. A plan has backed up those dreams. Any dream that is void of plan is called a balloon dream. <laughs> so you must dream, but your dream must have a plan behind it. The plan behind your dream is the root of the, of the dream. If there's no plan to your dream, it's a balloon dream. What happens to balloons? They float away. <laughs> have, you, have you ever released a balloon in the air? They just float, they just fly away. The wind carries them wherever it wants to. But you need a plan. A plan must, a growth plan must back your dream. Personally, in character, in intellectually, in, in how you grow your network, in the people you relate with, in, in even knowing how to manage your resources, learning about finances, learning about, I mean, have that strategic approach to growth. And then of course, the first beneficiary is yourself because you begin to have joy in your growth approach, in the returns that accrue to you. And of course, peace of mind, because listen, someone who, does not have a growth agenda, will always be under pressure. If you are under pressure, you are not at peace. <laughs> I think it goes without saying. It does not mean that there will not be challenges, even with your plan, but you are always better off with a plan <laughs> than without a plan. And of course, a worthwhile legacy by growing others because you now have something to give. As a matter of fact, people will be reaching out to you because they already see it in you. That's when you become an inspiration to your community. When people see what they like in you, they will come to you and say, can you help us? Can you teach us? Can you give me advice? That's when it happens. Right, we must wrap up now. Seven choices to habitually make on your growth journey. It is not just speaking. It is action, our thinking, our feeling, and our choosing. The choices we make are our responsibility. So choose to be happy regardless of your prevailing situation. Yes, the economy is challenging. I know. I know. Sometimes people will say, wait a minute, how do we, I even find the finances to pay for this and that? And this, these are real-term challenges. However, you can still choose to be joyful in spite of those challenges. And joy only comes when you know that I have it tomorrow. I, I have it tomorrow. I, my life is not ending today. It's not ending as it is now. This is not my bus stop. I'm on a journey. Choose integrity over dishonesty. Some people will say, okay, let me, let me make a statement. Is it right to say honesty is your best policy? Yes or no? Put it, put it in the chat box. Is it right to say honesty is the best policy? Is that true? I want to see responses. 
if you are really following. Honesty is the best policy discourse. Yes or no? Just a short answer. Well, I like to challenge. If you say yes, I like to challenge it. If you if oh okay, well, my friend says yes, it is, and I and I probably know where you're coming from. However, I'll put it this way: if honesty is your best policy, maybe you still can't be trusted. Honesty has to be the only policy. <laughs> Because if it is your best, it means sometimes, yeah, you know, when things are not as good, you will do something else. It has to be the only policy. So integrity has to be the only policy. That's where I'm going. Now, we also have to choose our friends wisely. Look, not everyone is going in your, in your, in your direction. Some people are going where you do not want to be. It's better to not be emotional <laughs> when it comes to this. You cannot be. Uh, you cannot allow your emotion to take the best to get the best of you when it comes to matters of your future and destiny. It's better to say no. I was, you know, maybe 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 someone will remember this. I remember when I was in under level, and I had some friends. I just met them, and they said, "Oh, let's go to the law department to go and look at uh, to go and uh, chase or look at some of those girls." And I said, "Listen, is that what you guys are doing?" <laughs> I said, our friendship ends today. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I did not speak to them since that day. You can say that was harsh, but, but I don't think I've had, I have any regrets <laughs> by making that decision because they were, they, were, they were going somewhere I did not want to go. I did not go to the school to be chasing girls. We ended that friendship on the road like that. <laughs> so... Uh, you should say, oh, you should have taken it easy. No, it's better for me that I did not take it easy. <laughs> so if people are not going in your, on your journey, why do you want to hang out with them? Choose yourself, your friends and your association wisely. Then choose to read widely and strategically. Look, we cannot afford to be novices. We can't afford it. It's, the cost is too high. Then Choose to speak affirmative words instead of words that disempower you. Do not agree with anyone that puts you down. Do not agree with anyone that knocks you down. God already says you are his image. Listen, the reason why Jesus died for us is not to give us value. It is to confirm our value that we are God's image. I see a question there from my friend Ayobayo. Honesty, integrity, all seem to be embodied by attitude. Can we say attitude is the best policy? Well, attitude is, a, is an umbrella that talks about various character traits. So the question is, which attitude? We have to break it down. The umbrella, yes, is good to, to encapsulate them, but we have to, be on, we have to break it down such as, do I speak truth? Do I, do I say the truth? Truth is an attitude. Being truthful, rather, is an attitude. And we have to isolate that to being patient. Am I truthful? Am I patient? Am I honest? Uh, do I keep my words? Um, am I dependable? All of those things are attitude. But if you, want to, if you want to group them together, you can say attitude, and that's true. Thank you very much for that question, Arubayo. So speak well about your future. And of course, choose to excel in all of It may mean that you say, say, instead of doing 10 things, I can only do five things. And I'm going to focus on those five things to do them well. In other words, it may not be beneficial to spread yourself so thinly that you cannot do anything well. And above all, continue to trust. Oh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. 
and he shall direct your path. We can never be wiser than this word of God. We can never be more civilized than the word of God. So why don't people grow? Fear. I think I think everyone knows it's unfair one way or the other. I won't go through every every word there, but but fear can be very debilitating. Okay, let me say this. Maybe that this will help. Courage is the determination to go ahead in spite of your fear. And that's why we must be courageous. See, everyone gets afraid at some point. When you're undertaking something that's very big, yes, you, you, can, you can feel a bit of fear. And that only means that you are being realistic about your abilities. However, courage, courage is the capacity to move ahead on the right path in spite of the fear you, you feel, in spite of the, of the uh, feeling of inadequacy that you feel. Courage. And sometimes, and, and there's a lot that goes on with the attitude of the mind. Let me say it this way. You are not inferior to anyone. Respect people. Honor people, but you are not inferior. You are God's image. Think about it. In fact, I would say, sit down by yourself in your room and think about that. I am God's nature. Woo. I have God's nature. I have God's ability. Let that sink deep in your heart. If there's anything that gives me courage, that's exactly what it is. You are not an inferior to any group of people in the world. Never you say, oh, people of African heritage are inferior to people from any part of the world. You are not. Please stop it. Do not entertain that thought in your heart. And when you hear people talk about it, say, keep quiet. Anyway, yes, I have God's DNA. I came out of God. Look, if you make a chair out of gold, what do you call that chair? Gold chair. It's not to not to say golden chair. It's gold chair <laughs> because it's made out of gold. And it is nothing less than gold. If you came out of God, you are not just godly. You are God nature, God material. So what are we saying? What do we need to do? Prepare and prepare and prepare. And let me say this. We always have time to prepare unless it is squandered on distractions and the things that we really have no business investing our time into. God has given us the time to do the right things. It is the wrong things that steal that time. That's why we, we need to be able to claw our time back. All right, good preparation prevents poor performance, no doubt. You have to face your fear to conquer it. And that's what I just described as courage. And then decide that your personal growth is a must. It goes without saying that if you're not growing, you're definitely not living. Because growth is the only evidence of life. You remember Mr. Niger D, <laughs> if you do science, yes, if there is no growth, then nothing is not living, period. And that's why we, we rest this matter. If time permits us, we can take quick questions. Otherwise, um, I will take direction from our convener. Thank you, God bless. Thank you very much for that powerful session. Oh, wow, well, this is amazing, you know. Uh, you brought me down the memory lane, 
in fact, some of the things I've even forgotten, you know, <laughs> you, you really brought them out. Because we didn't just appear, my friend. Yeah. We, we, everyone has a journey. And, and our story is hidden in our journeys. That's true. So I know some of us will probably have questions. If you want to ask your question, you can go ahead and unmute yourself. If you want to put it on the chat box, that will also be welcome. Uh, let's do that very quickly so that we can move to the next session. Uh, this is amazing. Thank you very much, uh, my very good friend, for that powerful session. I know everyone here has benefited, not just in one way or the other, they have benefited a lot because personally, uh, it's, it's, it's as if something new has just dropped upon me. And I know it's going to linger on me for a long time. It was as if I've never taken a course on a growth plan before. Thank you very much. Well, well, my friend, is it not because you have a learning attitude? Yeah. We, we, we must always come to God as an empty cup. Exactly. The moment our cups are full, mm. then God has nowhere to put anything, any of his content. Exactly. That's why we must always stay hungry. Exactly. Thank you. So do we have questions? Uh, if you have a question, like I always say, the proof of learning is asking questions. If you are not asking questions, something is not happening in your mind. If something is being generative, if, if there is reaction in your mind, then that is an evidence of learning. So there must be question uh, that is coming up within you that you probably need clarity or clarification over. Or, or right. there I say, if anybody just have any quick comment on what you have said. Yeah, comment you, or observation. Then, then by, by all means, please do. Go ahead. So true. All right, so with, I think we can move to the next session.